This is 172nd session of this this morning devotion. And we are starting with the hymn number 176. I want you to join me, sing these songs with your all your mind, and uh, let it not just be a formality or fulfillment of obligation. Remember that we cannot come from the place of uh, formality and formalism, and sacramental sacramentals, and then and begin to practice formalism and uh, get into all of those things. So I want you to sing it with all your heart with me. Jesus, keep me near the cross. They are a precious fountain. Free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my rapture so shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. Near the bright a morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my rapture so shall find rest beyond the river near the cross O Lamb of God bring his sins before me help me walk from there to there with its shadow over me in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my rapture so shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross I wash and wait, hoping, trusting ever, till I reach the golden strand, just beyond the river, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my rapture so shall find rest beyond the river. I want you to come before the Lord this morning to thank Him and to pledge your allegiance to the truth of God and to the cross, that the cross will ever remain your glory until you rest beyond the river. That you are not going to join the crowd that have a following Christianity that the cross is being removed from. Can we talk to God from the depth of our heart? Father, this morning we want to appreciate you because of uh, bringing us to another weekend. We uh, bless you for how you, you carried us through on the eagle's wings uh, to bring us a blessed Redeemer to this weekend 
of uh, second week of uh, November. We want to appreciate you, blessed Redeemer. Now this morning, Lord, we're asking, like this songwriter requested, Jesus, keep us near the cross. Now because that is where we have precious fountain. And, uh, and this fountain is uh, free to all healing stream. And then and it's flowing from Calvary's mountain. This morning, Lord, we ask, blessed Father, that the truth of the Almighty God, the presence of God, the life of God, the power of God will flow into our lives this morning so that we can continue. And throughout this day, great Father, we will be men and women that the life of God will flow out from us to reach to others around us. We bless you, eternal Father. Keep us near the cross and help us to remain trembling so everlasting father help us almighty father not to toy with the cross keep us near the cross O lamb of god and bring the sins of the cross today before us and help us today to walk in your will and under the, the shadow of the cross blessed be god forever as we uh, sit back to listen to the word of God, the comprehensive word of God that has life and has truth, Father, and has light. I want to ask that the light of the gospel, the light of the gospel sh should be thrown to us this day so that we can walk on its light. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. Spirit of the living God, take us by our hands through to the word of God and take us through today to, to come back as we've gone out, as we go out rather, with a testimony and with a joy that uh, we have lived for God today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This morning this course uh, is uh, titled Whom the World Was Not Worthy. This is talking about heroes of faith, the uh, patriarchs, men who have gone before us, the people we look to as uh, the fathers of faith and um, how they have looked at this world and the things about this life and they were able to place the world to where it belongs and as a result of that they were able to please God they were able to serve God acceptably they also experience exploits in their life exploits in their ministry temptations came their way they stood those temptations and overcame them and kept on moving they also fulfilled the vision of god given to them because of the way they were able to place the world where it belongs to here we are a people that god almighty has raised to take the people back to the foundation of the truth take the people back to the narrow path take the people back to the cross, take the people back to the way of God, to the date of our fathers. We cannot afford to be different from these men who have gone before us. We cannot be taking the people back to the faith of the fathers and we are living differently from the ways of the fathers and the things that do not make meaning to the fathers now if they begin to make great meaning to us then you find out that uh, we will not be able to fulfill our calling in the lord and so the text we're drawing from this morning is hebrews the popular scripture chapter 11 36 to 40. now before we read verse 36 to 40 can we read from verse 1 now faith is the substance of things put for the evidence of things not seen for by each the elders obtain a good report where the people that the world was not worthy they consider the world as worthless they consider the world and its things as uh, not what uh, risking their souls for not what uh, losing the ministry for now verse 2 3 through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen are not made of things we do appear. Now by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, 
by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. This is talking about faith of Abel, and then Abel's lifestyle, Abel's sacrifice. And then the next is Enoch. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now Enoch was able to please God because of uh, the way he saw the world. Noah equally was able to please God because of the way he saw the Lord. And so now let's go to read from verse 36 to 40. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings, yeah, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. Now this is talking about people who were tortured, who submitted to be mocked, to cruel mockings, to scourgings. But then they were able to do this because of the perspective in which they saw the entire world and the tense thereof. They were stoned, they were son asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Now, verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. Now, they were able to submit to all the trials, and they didn't give up because they have counted the world not worthy. They wandered in deserts and didn't complain, and in mountains, and in dens, and caves of the earth, and these all having obtained a good report, through faith received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now all of these heroes of faith, uh, elders of faith, fathers of faith, they submitted to the Lord, went through challenges, went through trials, went through difficulties, and they didn't give up because of the understanding they had. Little wonder that you find Jesus Christ saying to all the people that will want to follow him that they had to forsake the world. Can we go to read Matthew chapter 16? 16 chapter of Matthew and we read from verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. Any man to come after me, then there was a need of uh, forsaking all, forsaking the world, and then and to follow. And it was because of what Jesus Christ knew that these people had considered the world worthless. Until you consider even the life this side worthless, you will not be able to live an acceptable life for the next life. Until you begin to consider the goodies and what have you about this life and place them where they belong to, you find out that, that uh, you will not sufficiently live for the next life. You will not sufficiently pursue programs that are for the next life. Now, in the same Matthew chapter 16, verse 25, For whosoever will save his life in this side shall lose it the other side. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, for what they believed, shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Now, Jesus Christ um, was drawing the attention of the disciples, his audience, to the fact that the, the world put together with all the things inside it are nothing in comparison with the soul of a man, their own soul and the souls of others that uh, we find people today toying with. And so, in the list of men and women who saw the world, from the right perspective, who consider the world not worthy of losing the eternity for. You find Abraham, you find Moses, you find Paul, and all the matters of faith, and all the heroes of faith. Now in Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, in that Hebrews chapter 11, you see mentioning 
of Moses and the mentioning of uh, of uh, the the matters of faith chapter 11 of uh, uh, Hebrews and let's read verse 8 to 10 by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a, a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with isaac and jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is god now that was what shaped his mind that is what shaped his actions that is, was uh, what made him. Now, the way you look at the world, the way you look at the things of this life, the way you look at the temporal things of this life, the way you look at this present life, will determine how you will live your life. Look at verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now they saw themselves as strangers going somewhere, pilgrims uh, moving to somewhere. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. They, they, they were seeking a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from when they came out, they were not mindful of the world. They might have had opportunity to have returned. Why have we returned to the world? Why do we not have testimonies today? Why are we toying and joking with our eternal destiny and even the vision of God? Why are we uh, pursuing the vision with a slack hand? Is it not because the vision has been lost? Is it not because the vision of eternity is being lost? Is it not because we have no longer eternity in our thought? Now, verse 17, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten. So look at verse 16. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly, heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For they had prepared for them, he has prepared for them a city. God prepared for them a city. And therefore they understood that there was something prepared for them. And what the, the, the present could not interfere or interrupt with their relationship with God. Now look at Moses in verse 23 of Hebrews chapter 11. By faith Moses, when he was born, was he three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. Now, before one, we take right step, godly step, steps that are influenced by heaven. He has to see beyond. They saw beyond. They saw beyond the little baby. They saw the, the, the coming program of God that, that he will use him. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. When you are able to see beyond, fear will depart. Now, you, when you ask, how did Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how were they able to withstand the terror? And we're not afraid of the fire. We're not afraid of the lions. It was because they saw beyond. When you see beyond, you won't be afraid of the king's commandment. Today, we are fearful Christians, we are fearful men of God, we are fearful people. And uh, when they want to say some things, you find them, while they are presenting it, obviously you will know that they have some element of fear in them. That is because we have not seen properly beyond. Once you begin to see beyond, fear of man, fear of anything, we give way. Verse 24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had the respect unto the recompense of the reward. Now, can you see how Moses was able to forsake Egypt? Moses was able to forsake the enjoyment of all the goodies and all the things of Egypt, he forsook them because he saw something greater, he saw something better. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt. Now, until you see the treasure uh, be, be, be beyond the grave, until you see the treasure in eternity, you will not be able, you will not be able to 
address certain things. Remember that Jesus Christ was able to stand all the trials, stand all the trouble, and endure the cross because of what he saw that was beyond. What he saw that was before him. And so, whether it is suffering or enjoyment or what have you about the world, they began to mean nothing to him. Why is the world and the things of the world becoming so meaningful to you and you are getting so attached to them? You are getting so attached, so committed to the things of this life. Is it not because you have lost the sight of eternity? You have lost the sight of the return. That is why the world has become so, so 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 wonderful to you that is why the world has become so uh, interesting to you but it was not so with the people who have gone before us they were able to fulfill their ministry they were able to fulfill their purpose and they were able to uh, fulfill their lives they were able to fulfill their commission and vision because of this understanding and if you read from verse 31 to verse 40, um, you will see others. Now look at verse uh, 32. And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jeph Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdom wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the age of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, was valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of aliens. So that happened because the people, the people saw beyond. Apostle Paul was a man also who saw beyond, and because he saw beyond, he stood, and then he was not moved by temptations and by trials and by persecution. The only thing controlling him was the work of God, the vision to fulfill the cause for which God had called him. That is stated in us of Apostle chapter 20, 23 to 24. So then, we also have people like Gideon, Daniel, and Companion. In the list of these men and women, that uh, the world was uh, not worthy. And uh, in the list of these men who saw the world as vanity of vanity, and so yielded their time, their treasures, and their lives for the kingdom purpose. Now, if you do not see the world as vanity, if you do not see the world and the things of the world from the uh, proper perspective, it will be difficult for you to yield your time, to yield your treasures, and to yield your life for the kingdom purpose. But look at Daniel, look at Shadrach, look at Abednego, look at these heroes of faith, look at these fathers of faith, look at these faithful servants of God, look at the, the patriarchs. Everything they did was be born out of their understanding of uh, what the world is and placing it where it belongs to. So then it will require knowledge of what lies beyond for you and I to be able to count this present world worthless. If you don't know what lies beyond, the, the present world will continue to be very, very worthy to you and then attractive to you. Can we read Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, he was able to take the cross and despise the shame because of ability to see beyond. You know the story of Stephen, where heaven opened and Stephen saw beyond. Stephen said to the Lord, forgive these people because they, don't, they do not know what they were doing. Apostle Paul also saw beyond those several encounters, those several experiences he had in his dealings with God, removed the world and replaced it with heaven. And so he saw the world as a, as a chaff. He saw the world as nothing. And because of that, he was able to give up everything for the excellency of knowledge of Christ Jesus. Now, Paul could have heard to those things, uh, the worldly accolades, 
and uh, all of those things of the world he had acquired but he couldn't hold on to them and his reason was because he saw beyond now in second corinthians chapter 4 can we read verse 16 for which cause we fed not but do our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day now what was responsible for the inward renewal daily although the body is being fainted the body is being buffeted now what led to his being renewed daily was because of what he understood about eternity about life beyond now verse 16 for our little affliction which is but for a moment worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal can you see that but the things which are not seen are eternal so he got a clear picture of uh, the worthlessness of the world and uh, the worth of uh, the world beyond and therefore he was able to make a correct choice until you see the beyond and then uh, and also see the present and compare both of them you will not be able to take a correct decision about how you will live your christian life come again the world is until you are able to see the world as the world is and then and see beyond this life what is prepared for those who love god and the, the mansions that jesus christ has prepared for us are both and the, the things that are awaiting those who will conquer those who will finish their call who will finish the vision until you see it and put them side by side which the world and the things of the world the temporal things of the world until you compare eternity put eternity and eternal things one side and put the world and the, the temporal things one side and then and think properly you will not be able to make a right decision you and until you make a correct decision you will not live a correct christian life today we have 40 christians we have 40 watchmen we have watchmen that are cannot control their mouth cannot control their lives cannot control anything in their lives because they have not been able to wear eternity in the balance of time and then and take decision on what they should now the world is not truly worth anything in comparison to the glory that will be revealed soon now look at how john saw the world it is proper we see the the, the things from the people who have gone before us john the beloved that they have run this race before a midst of persecution he was able to stand let's hear what he has to say first john chapter 2 we read from verse 15 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the loss of the flesh the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lost and all the things therein but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever he saw everything in the world and the world itself as passing tense it is the same way that james saw the world that same way he saw the world was what helped him to also uh, say what he said concerning what should be the believers relationship with the world james chapter 4 and let's read verse 4 ye adulterers and adulteresses know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god now he was speaking from a perspective of a man who have seen eternity and the, the temporal things and the time the things in time and then and have compared and had made a correct comparison and then and arrived at a correct choice can we read chapter 7 of first corinthians and then on verse 29 but this i said brethren the time is short it remaineth that the both day that have wives be as though they had none and they that weep as though they wept not and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not and they that buy as though they possess not uh, and they that do this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world 
passeth away. The word and everything about it, they are on the person. Can we read um, 39? If you don't see the word from that way, then you will be dying for it. And listen to me, you don't need to go far to, to see that the word is passing away. Look at the dress you were wearing before. You used to admire it about three years ago. Look at the car that when you bought it. Look at the house you built some years back. And it was the raining thing. But before you know what is happening, it has become outdated. Now go to the, the streets of Abuja. In those days, the houses that you people used to say, this is the best in town. Go to the street, streets of uh, the country or the town you are living or the village where you are. And then and you discover that the houses that 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or even 5 years ago, everybody used to talk about, now has become useless and obsolete. That is to show you that nobody should tie his uh, destiny and eternity to the things of this life. Now in Psalm 39, can we read verse uh, 5? Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. They trouble themselves in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them because they don't endure. So then, why should we get distracted by the things that are not lasting? Why should we tie our vision, our destiny to the temporal things? Now, look at Daniel and his companion. If you examine their lives, you find that these young men, they call the food and wine drank or taken by the king and his noble men. They saw it as a defilement, and as a result of that, they refused to be attracted. It was the way they saw those enjoyment. It was the way they saw those things that made them not to be attracted to it. If they saw it as enjoyable, if they saw it as wonderful, it would become a temptation. But if they saw it as uh, something that uh, it's not worth giving attention. Then you find that, that uh, they will not be attracted. It will not affect them. They will continue moving. Therefore, God wants you to see the world from the angle that the fathers of faith saw it, from the angle that the, the men who, uh, who fulfill the vision of God and the calling of God upon their lives saw it. As watchmen, if we don't see things from the perspective of the people who have done what we are doing now, who have pursued vision, who were used greatly by God to accomplish a great feat, you find that, that we will not go far. Now the mighty uh, men of David, who geoparded their lives to get water for David, their world and their lives did not want anything to them. So, and as a result of that, they were able to donate their lives. They were able to surrender everything in order to get this thing done, get the enemies removed. So then, Apostle Paul stood in jeopardy every hour, according to him, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 30, because of his ability to see life beyond. So he was able to jeopardize his life. So then, until we see life from proper perspective until we see the world from the proper perspective the vision we are pursuing we will just be talking and talking and wasting our time and then and every day uh, we will be testifying every year i've added one year no when you are reducing one year when, when we are losing the good days we can do something for god and so it is interesting however to know that you that whatever you give up or you gave up you are going to gain those things you think as i gave up this i gave up that is a gain anything you give up for the kingdom is a gain we can find that in the stories of the the, the answer of jesus to peter when he asked a question but before the let's read first corinthians chapter 
9 and from verse 19 to hear from Apostle Paul. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew. Why? That I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law. Why? That I might gain them that are under the law. You see, in giving up to gain. Giving up to gain. So whatever we give up for the faith, for the vision, I want to tell you, is again hereafter. To the weak, verse 22, became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. That is Apostle Paul for you. Now, can we re go to uh, read from Matthew? Let's go to Matthew chapter 19 of Matthew. And let us read verse uh, 27. When then answered Peter and said unto him, unto Jesus, Behold, we have forsaken all for your sake, for the vision, for the ministry, and follow thee. What shall we have thereof? What's our gain? We have lost all of this in the course of following you. We have lost all of this in the course of, the, of answering the call. What are we going to have? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that had forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, for the gospel's sake, for the vision's sake, in pursuit of the purpose of God, in pursuit of the threefold end time project, shall receive hundredfold and shall inherit the everlasting life hundredfold of what is lost with eternal life some of that if you read mark account and luke account you find him saying hundredfold in this world and then i inherit eternal life can we read mark chapter 10 mark chapter 10 mark chapter 10 can we read from verse 29 and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospel. But he shall receive a hundredfold now, in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life. Can you see that? So then, you find that, that whatever it has cost you to in the pursuit of the vision, in the pursuit of the, the gospel work, in the pursuit of the threefold end time project, in the in the service of the Lord, the promise is from Jesus, who cannot tell lie, that we will get a, a 100 fold here, and then eternal life hereafter. We want to come before the Lord God of heaven and earth and thank Him this morning for the privilege to hear the word of God, that uh, the word should be placed where it belongs to, and then an eternity also, an eternal thing, an eternal purpose, should equally also be placed where they belong to, so that uh, we will be able to fulfill the call of God in our lives. So let us pray. God Almighty, we thank you this morning because of the privilege of uh, hearing you morning by morning. Thank you because... Father, in the month of October, we had our Father in the Lord urging us, teaching us about, um, about uh, morning devotion, morning prayer, having quiet time, a time with, of meeting with God, and also having meeting with God in the evening. He made us to know that it is a tradition. Therefore, great Father in heaven, which says, which proves that uh, what we are doing is uh, in line with the scriptures. I therefore pray, eternal Father in heaven, everyone who has not been taking this issue seriously, I know that this is a timely wake-up call, that we will wake up, eternal Father, to embrace the Lord and embrace the Lord every morning. Now, Lord, you have spoken and the word came with all clarity, O oh God. 
that we should see the world as worthless because that was the way the fathers of faith that was the way our our progenitors that was the way our 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 fathers in faith that was the way they saw the world and have been able to endure great father in heaven i want to say lord in glory that uh, all the confusion all the uh, the wrong picture that the devil has been presenting about eternity about heaven my father all the bogus picture all the deceit of the devil great father that they have been deceiving our minds through the things of this life like he deceived adam and eve in the garden making that which is forbidden to be so attractive and then and trivializing trivializing that which should be the real thing making god a liar and uh, making god not to be uh, interested in the well-being of the people and thereby deceiving the husband and wife and plunging them into the into into confusion blessed redeemer i pray that you help us to be able to read the handwriting of the world quickly to adjust our mind to the things of eternity thank you this morning in jesus name amen the lord jesus moses and apostle paul they saw the world and things of the world as they were and so placed them where they belong I want us to pray for God to give us a clear understanding of the word as it is because the devil has so much magnified the word, made the world so much attractive, made the things of the world so much attractive, and made heaven to look as uh, nothing. Can we pray? Father, this morning we come to ask the Lord for a special awareness into the realm of the spirit. Look at our father Abraham. He was able to see the city whose builder is God. The, the city that God laid the foundation. And even all the fathers of faith, all the patriarchs, my father and my God, and faithful servants of God, they were able to see beyond. And their ability to see beyond was what sustained them. Ability to see beyond was what kept them in the midst of trouble, in the midst of persecution, and in the midst of temptation. When their, their lives were under threat, grandfather, they couldn't succumb because they saw beyond. I want to ask the Lord of glory that uh, you do a deep work in our lives and make us to start seeing beyond our natural eyes and to see into the realm of the spirit what Jesus Christ has said, I, have, I will go to prepare for a, you a place my father and my god help us to always set our eyes on the mansion that god has prepared above for us so that we will not be distracted with whatsoever that is here whatever we don't have or whatever we have whatever privilege we are not able to have and whatever we have father i pray that we refuse them distracting us whether it is positive or negative thank you this morning in jesus name amen judas Demas, Ekan, Gehazi, they had wrong view about the word. Judas, Demas, Ekan, Gehazi had wrong views about the world and the worldly things and material things. And because of that, they were unable to make out anything from their relationship with God. That was because they become distracted. I want us to pray against uh, distractions that will come, that are coming from the world. Distraction. God to help you to see the world so that you refuse to be distracted. So that I refuse to be distracted. Let God make you to see the temporal, the temporal nature of life here. So that you can pay a close attention to the life, next life. Grace to see the, the temporal nature of the material world, the houses in the world, the car in the world, the program of the world, the temporal nature of every program of the world. When you see it, you will be able to, to address it. You will be able not to allow it to distract. Look at Judas was distracted. Demas, Ekan, Gehazi, they missed the best for their lives and they, were, they lost their ministry and ended in shame because 
of uh, the devil covering their minds with the word and the terms. Lord in glory, we come this morning. Look at Judas. He had a great opportunity, Father, to be among the disciples. And his name to be written, Great Father, in a good, in a good plate. Now, Lord, Demas equally has an opportunity, Great Father. Look at Ekan, look at Gehazi. All these were men of God and many others, Satan and Father. But they got themselves distracted because of uh, their judgment because they consider something. Judas considered money more than ministry. Demas considered the word more than the calling of God. He can consider the Babylonian dress, a great father, more important than the, his enlistment in the army. Gehazi considered uh, the little gift he will receive from the, what the ministry hood ahead for him and they lost out. Therefore, great father, I pray, O oh God, that uh, you help us to understand the temporal nature of the world and whatever it could offer so that we will refuse their distractions when the devil brought, brings them. Just like he brought those things to Jesus and Jesus will not take it. And just like he brought it to Moses and Moses was able to compare between the temporal and eternal. And then and he made choice to stand by the side of God. Just like Paul had the deep understanding and drew the line. Oh God, I pray for this understanding and awareness. In the name of Jesus, Amen. People who achieved their God-given vision in time past, like Moses, like Nehemiah, and the disciples of Jesus Christ, and Paul, and David, uh, and his mighty men, they saw the world to, in the right perspective, and taste the world where it belongs. I want us to pray for the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, a people with vision. Now, a vision that the devil considers as a threat. A vision that the devil will do whatever lies in his hand to make sure that uh, we lose it or we can be pursuing it, but it will make us to lose the life, the expected life of the people pursuing such vision. This morning we come before God Almighty. Where the heavens are earth. Here we are, oh God, the vision we are, you have given us. We are not the first to receive vision. Moses got a vision. Great father, we saw how he dismissed every time that would want to remove him from the vision. Look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah also got vision. He stood on the temptation. The disciples of Jesus gave up. My father, Apostle Paul, gave up. David and his mighty men, so to say, risked their life for the purpose of the vision. Therefore, this morning, eternal rock of ages will come before God, placing our hands in your hand, placing our lives in your hand. Ask Him, the Lord of glory, the Lord of Sabbath, to go ahead and walk in us, go ahead and help us. You help Nehemiah with understanding, and Moses, and the disciples of Jesus, and Paul, and David, and every other person, even Abraham, to give up everything. Father, it was not by their power, even Noah, great father in heaven. All of these people that uh, pursued the vision and achieved it was not by their own power. It was not their making. It was God. Therefore, the same God we come this morning asking. Your grace be poured into our lives and understanding. Take us through, O oh God, and uh, let this vision make it to begin to make great meaning to us. In the name of Jesus, meaning more than every other thing in this life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We need to see beyond this earthly life into the coming glory and we need to see beyond this present life into the world that is coming if we must if the world must lose meaning and attraction to us that was how it happened to paul paul saw the coming glory paul saw the coming blessing and the world lost its attraction i want us to pray that the world will lose its attraction I want to ask, is the word attractive? Very, very attractive. Is sin attractive? Very, very attractive. If the word and sin, if they are not attractive, Satan wouldn't have used it to tempt Jesus. And you know that men will always fall for those false attractions. And then when they now yield to those false hood, those painted things, those uh, glittering things that that all the glitters are not gold. When we become victims, the devil will just disappear. Let us pray 
that God Almighty will help you to start seeing beyond this earthly life into the coming life, into the coming glory, beyond this present life, into the coming glory, so that the world will lose its attraction. Father, we have in the Bible men that we have read the world was of, of whom the world was not worthy. Jehovah, I pray for myself, I pray for my pastor, I pray for all the men of God, Lord in glory, that you help us, that the world will consider not, the world will remain not being worthy to us, because when the world begins to become worthy, my Father and my God, then we will begin to lose, heaven will start losing meaning. Father, there are people today, the world has become so worthy to them, that heaven has lost its meaning. Who has came the Lord of glory to come to the aid of his people? Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Men that God uses to do extraordinary things like we are we have been called to do in the watchman are men of uncommon conviction, men of uncommon yieldedness, men who are ready to go extra mile. Men like Abraham of an uncommon conviction. Men like Moses, men like Paul. So I want you to pray for the present watchman that God will make us men of unusual conviction. Men who are ready to go extra mile with God. Father, we thank you this morning as we lift up ourselves before God, asking the Almighty Father, look at the request we have made, O oh God. Make out of us watchmen, men of uncommon conviction, men of uncommon yieldedness, men ready to go extra mile, men of total yieldedness and total surrenderedness, men of absolute conviction in the power of God, like Apostle Paul, Abraham, Moses, and the rest of the people. Thank you, Father. This is necessary for the vision to be accomplished. Glory be to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, Men who led God's army in time past were wounded and attacked from all sides, like Apostle Paul, but they refused to despair. They refused to give up. We're going to pray for our Father in the Lord and his family and all the leaders of the watchman as the enemy is attacking us, fighting within, fighting from without, that God will continue to help us to remain standing. And at the same time, present your family before the Lord. Ask God to take you out today and bring you and the members of your family and the church back. Father, we thank you because uh, Apostle Paul was wounded. But then, uh, he, he was. Uh, look at the, what he said, Lord. He said, uh, Apostle Paul spoke about how he was, uh, uh, he was uh, brought down. How he was brought down, but not crushed. Great Father. Look at what he said. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead. And then he said, For we will not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. Now that was the level of trouble. Verse, uh, the, the next thing he said is that uh, we are troubled on every side. Second Corinthians 4 verse 8. Troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. Now let us pray for our daddy in the Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you. These are, these are the experiences that Apostle Paul went through. We present the man of God and all his able lieutenants into your hand. Ask him the Lord, as the enemy is attacking us, as opposing us, and wounding us, Lord, I pray that you continue to help us like you help Apostle Paul. Though it's coming from within and coming from without, and coming from all sides, Father, you will keep us until we have overcome, until we fulfill the ministry. Thank you very much. We present our sons into your hand, our families, our children. Take us out today. Keep us and uh, bring us back with testimony. Thank you, Almighty Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take from him 177. I will call it a day. Thou my everlasting portion, 
more than friend or life to me all along my pilgrim journey savior let me walk with thee close to thee close to thee close to thee close to thee all along my pilgrim journey savior let me walk with thee not for ease or worldly pleasure not fair fame my prayer shall be gladly will i toil and suffer only let me walk with thee close to thee close to thee close to thee close to thee gladly will i toil and suffer only let me walk with thee may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit abide with us now and forevermore amen good morning and god bless you